This is Crime Cruise, Love Boat Exposed, Saturday on the Love Boat, the podcast that hunts down and tears apart shenanigans on this classic TV show. I see an awful lot of bodies who really have nothing to be ashamed of. When laws, morals, and behavior go rogue. She's a student of marine biology, and I know a lot of marines who like to study her biology. We are there. Saturday on the Love Boat, Julia's game to join an all-male club, but she's shocked the things they ask her to do. Now, from Studio 109, welcome aboard. I think it's time you and I got to know each other better. A man looks very lonely at sea. Yes, I can imagine. This is Crime Cruise the Love Boat Exposed. We're in Love Boat Season 2, and this would be Episode 3. And i got to welcome our co-host. Charlotte Jones. And of course, out west, our man, Producer Caleb. How are you, Producer Caleb? I'm doing great. We had our first snow a couple days ago, so it's been a little chilly. But oh, my goodness. Beautiful. Did you go out and do a snow angel? If by doing a snow injury, you mean cleaning my uh, driveway, then yes. Then yes. Oh, yeah. you didn't do like a Clark Griswold, get a sled and like spray stuff on the bottom and like pull on Uncle Eddie and just go down the, the hill. I've been watching that movie no. so much, you guys, like that and <laughs> Elf and all the things. There's always a room for National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Right. We're deep into season two. The first episodes, one and two of season two, were like Castaway and Gillian's Island. So they seem to be wanting to reinvent themselves on the show. Where will this go? Producer Caleb, just tease us with what you tease saw. What, yes. When you pulled the clips from episode three, what kind of feel? Where are we going without giving specifics? Episode three is pretty sad, honestly. Oh, it was no. tugging, no. tugging my heartstrings a little. Um, not many, not many hijinks or shenanigans, but kind of like a, ooh, dang, am I about to cry right now? Oh, no. Oh, no. good gosh. Has the love boat made any of us cry yet? That's my review. No, I don't think so. Okay, you? I no. haven't no. cried yet. No. No. This one was a close one for me. Okay. Wow. Okay, were there actual crimes or misdemeanors or moral situations? There, I think there was, there was not many. But okay. I did highlight the sad moment because I was that's a very big thing for us, I believe. Okay. Well, yeah, sad is uh, something. Is there a playmate on this episode? I don't think there is. Okay. Can't remember. There might, there might be, but, you know, because it's Love Boat, but I'm not. Right, right, right. Because right. okay. I might miss Barbie. Yeah, I miss Barbie Benton, who's yeah. been on two episodes of this season and one episode of the previous season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's beloved, and perhaps her only competition is Charo. Right. I'd like to see more of Charles. Did Hugh Hefner have some sort of money invested in this company? Maybe so. he like threw people their way? Because, I mean, that's how it used to work back in the day. Huh. Maybe Aaron Spelling had a special suite at the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> but Barbie <laughs> Benton, well-received especially by the doc, yeah. um, but by oh, the yeah, audiences by the as well. Well, I just pulled up the first frame of the first clip of this episode, and it's uh, it's rather intriguing. Maybe that's why you thought it was a Playboy centerfold read. Yeah, I mean, she playmate. looks like she's cute with blonde hair, and she has, like, a negligee, and she looks like she's running. I'm not sure how this could be sad. Let's figure it out. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I'm Patricia Sterling. Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> Starting it off with a... Like, they totally the ignore the woman, the older woman, because mm. they're too busy watching the hot blonde walk past them. I'll say this. I've rarely, if ever, heard the doc say, holy cow. I know. That's like going to Italy and hearing someone say, Mama Mia, which has happened to me a few times. You went to Italy before? Oh, yeah, yeah, And they yeah. said, Mama Mia. Oh, I've walked down the street and people have been like, Mama Mia. And people. I'm like, I made it. This okay. was like when I was wow. in my 20s. Like, and I was like, really cute. If, if I was in Italy in my 20s and people were like, Mama Mia. Oh, like, it made my whole day. Oh, yeah. Actually. I, would, I would be on my eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a little taste of things to come, and we'll just roll this, folks. Oh, hey, is it as great? Big deal, it's a boat. Oh, come on, look at the size of it. So it's a big boat. Why do we have to go on this old boat any? Suppose, Mary, dear. Mom. Okay. Rocky. <laughs> I have a feeling I know what's coming. Uh, what an ungrateful little shit. Right. His parents just <laughs> took him on like a thousand dollar cruise and he's like complaining already. I will tell it. you this. There's something off with this scene. I haven't seen it, but maybe he's, what is it when you're dying 
and they make a wish. Make foundation? a wish. Oh, it you feels think that's what's like happening? That. I don't know. Why else would they put a kid in a baseball cap and like have him so cliched? I don't know. I don't know. He sounds I, like I will, a just I will a- mention that that kid is is a female. What? So, what? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, so she, now we're into this part of the love boat. Oh, so boy. what what I thought, mm. well, and I don't know if I'm spoiling this, but what I thought that the love boat was going to do a really progressive thing and go with trans kid route because the mom was like, okay, Rosemary, like stop being ungrateful. And the kid was like, mom, I'm Rocky. But later throughout this episode, my opinion changed on that. Okay. And I think I'll leave it at that, not to, not to spoil right. too much. Okay. Let's see where this thing goes. Look at that dude. Oh, that's. I think this booklet is just wonderful. Thank you for giving it to me. Oh, it was my pleasure. Middle aged uh, couple. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Miss Selden. Miss Selden? I'm Mr. Atkins. Oh, Mr. Atkins. And you're the author. Well. <laughs> I must say I'm a bit surprised finding a man of your calling on a cruise ship. Well, I always like to go where the biggest challenge is. So the biggest challenges are on a cruise ship where no one can escape and you can literally just get drunk and hook up with anybody and and, and dare How I say, that, that dude, the woman was sort of a standard. I say middle age, but she's probably like, you know, my age. She looks like she's about 70, but uh, she's probably like in her well, 40s. Well, Leslie Nielsen looked like he was 57 and he was only 32. No, on he that wasn't episode. 32, by the way. I did look that up, but that was last season. We're into yes. new stuff. The guy, dictionary definition of a schlub. He yes. looked like a schlub, um, a bald dude, chubby, unbuttoned kind of shirt with a tie. Like sells a mattress. Yeah, a mattress sells. Mattress sells. Yeah, and he was by the pool sitting in a lounge chair and yeah. trying to pick up a woman and she seemed receptive. I don't get it. What do well, we need his, to know? You guys are completely wrong. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> the, this pamphlet is like a chastity, uh, <gasps> repent to Christ, um, oh, no. stay morally like sinless and don't have sex out of marriage kind of like ordeal. And he's very prude, like very prude. And this female is also very prude. And she, that's why she's like, oh, I love this. Like, this is incredible. I love oh. everything about this booklet. And he's like, well, yeah, I'm a bit of a, he has a like, bit of a savior complex because she like, called him like a like a like a savior or a hero some some religious term which is like gave him that like savior complex oh my god i think i just watched a documentary on this entire thing well this is strange yeah yeah yeah. i I watched i watched documentaries about churches with pamphlets there are a bunch in california which is shocking well or Guyana. Send you in to California. Is that is that my next this. assignment? Okay. And we'll put Caleb in Utah somewhere. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll perfect. Things. We'll do those things. What do they call it when Ooh. a detective lives amongst the bikers? When it's they... called being a narc. All right. Oh, that's one of the terms. <laughs> Undercover. Undercover. That's another term. That's not what I was looking for. Oh, the hell with it. Here we go. Your daughter says you have a 30th anniversary coming up. So why don't we celebrate it here on the ship? Our last Mr. night. Mr. Roper. It is. Oh, a party. I think that's a super idea. Miss McCoy to the Lido deck. Miss McCoy to the Lido deck, please. Hmm. Well, maybe I get to see you at the party. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> well, that's some young lady you raised. My compliments. Wait. What? Oh. Those are her parents? There's something wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. We have something to tell Julian. <gasps> it just couldn't be said on the phone or in a letter. This isn't exactly a pleasure cruise. We came to tell her we're getting a divorce. Oh, no. Not no, Julie's not parents. Oh, so boy. And it's Mr. Roper. How can Mr. Roper divorce anybody? I don't know. Well, maybe he meets Helen Roper, who was left on the island when we last. I know, so. but don't you think this is all going to end up good in the end? Caleb, is it all going to end up good in the end? Are they going to fall back in love? It, it kind of came to a shock to me before because, like, we've seen this story before in Love Boat where it's two married people. They kind of are tired of each other. They're kind of getting a divorce. But how do you kind of get a divorce? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's I, pretty I, cut I mean, and dry, right? Because, yeah, like, we, we've seen this before, but the fact that it's Julie's parents, it feels like it's a, it's a deeper cut, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll say this. Julie is an adult. She's a grown woman. I don't know that it would be that big of a problem. I mean, regardless of what era it's in, I mean, she's, how old is Julie? What do you figure? I'm going to say Julie probably on the show is supposed to be around 27, but let's not forget that Isaac freaked out when his mom 
who is he is, Isaac is also a grown man. He freaked mm-hmm. out when his mom was with a man on the boat. That's because the crew has a, a adult deficiency syndrome. They, that's actually very good. Yeah, you should be a children. psychologist. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We'll get into that. Okay. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Okay. How are you? Well, just turned to a therapy session. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe it could be. Yeah. How are your feelings? You need to express them to me <laughs> in, in words, Rob, in words. Well, okay, listen, I'm going to skip that whole, you know, psychology thing. And I'm just going to jump to something I forgot to mention. And I'm going to tell you how heartwarming, how pleasant it is to see producer Caleb in a captain's hat. Every I love week. it. Every week. It's an expectation now. We should all wear captain's hats. Why don't we have them, Rob? Oh, because it's his original thing now. Okay. I mean, I could get it. <laughs> I could get a captain's hat for us. But I mean, then it'd be like we're duplicating what he's doing. So uh-huh. well, by the way. So well. So well. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to get a clipboard well. like Julian Gopher and just... Check people Ooh. off. That, well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, okay. And then probably dressing up as the doc. Is that is that what the? I the think we have. I think well, we have all of ha- Halloween <laughs> next year figured out. I will do the doc uh, yeah. outfit. Need the glasses and his uh, pull up socks. Sly, sexy demeanor. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To Try that. Oh, one real sexy size. demeanor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Come on, Dad. Get some effort. I ask him to play your favorite song and you walk off the dance floor. Julie, dear, we have to talk to you. And we just can't do it here. Let's not drag this out anymore. Mother and I are getting a divorce. What? You're not serious. She's shocked. She's hurt. I'm afraid we are. No. No. <laughs> wow. Well, poor Julie, but also poor Mr. Roper. Why did they give him a tuxedo with such a large bow tie? <laughs> like, wasn't that bow tie like abnormally large for I a tuxedo? I think it was in. I think that was a, a statue. That was the move. It was literally enormous. Well, and if it wasn't a bow tie, I mean, that was the style. It was really large collars and really mm. large ties back in those days, too. Oh, it's sick, isn't it? It's a little bit. <laughs> Not as sick as Julie's, whatever, what would you call it? She's Her mental state? Her men, Julie's mental state. She's, oh no, she's like falling apart on the dance floor. And again, she's heading towards 30. Yes. I will say this as psychologist, Rob. Oh. We've been witnessing a spiraling down of Julie over a good many episodes. We saw it at the end of season one, and we're seeing this progress through last week's episodes on the island where Julie wanted to throw her. Well, I'm going to jump back. She threw herself at the dock at the end of season one. Yes. Then on the island, she was throwing herself at a a derelict bearded man who hadn't seen people for two decades. Right. And then Mm -hmm. she was rejected. Mm-hmm. Like flatly rejected. Like I don't want the skinny one. And now we're here. So maybe it's not a surprise that she's falling apart. Well, women get very lonely at sea. Ooh, the captain said that. I once. know. Okay. This is why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> well, any thoughts on the topic, producer Caleb? No, I think I think you nailed that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> we down at Studio 109. We figured it all out. All we figured right. it all. We both <laughs> <the love-o laughs> figured out. Everyone else can just go to bed. <laughs> well, uh, captain, I, I'm glad I ran into you. I, to talk to you about that party for my parents. I know, Julie. I know all about it. Oh. Well, You're right, because Meryl Steubing's bow tie is also very large. Right. <laughs> the sign of stature. <laughs> Masculinity. But this is where it gets weird, because it's like, sometimes the captain tries to play very boss man, right? Absolutely. But like also at the same time, he's holding Julie and giving her a hug because they're also family. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was really sweet. tender. Yes. The captain swings wildly. Oh, does. perhaps he's the most extreme and he's bipolar. Clearly. Yeah. I'm going to say that we've seen him from early season one. We know, cause we just heard this from the best of season one. He is crazed enough to hit hard on dudes in drag yeah like hard hardcore Mm -hmm. and then he had a chat with leslie nielsen in one of the earlier episodes too like heart to heart about how to win the affections of a younger woman to his good friend they play that sweet music in the background they always do that they've done it twice now in this episode once when julie's parents were talking about the oncoming divorce and 
Now, as the captain consoles Julie, it's quite a moment. It's a tender one. It is, but I like to see it happening because it reminds you that they're actually like a cohesive unit. No matter how Mm. screwed up they get and how many times they fight, I think they actually care about each other. Family. Family. Yeah. It's like us, three of us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to be in our Christmas card together. (laughs) We should do that. I don't know how the Fonz can do it. (laughs) Yes, we should. Do what? You know, kissing. (laughs) The Fonz does it? Well, he's always talking about it. He must have done it. You ever? Are you weird? <laughs> Defines does it. Maybe it's worth, uh, you know, checking out. You mean us? You're banana. <laughs> it's awful. We can stop. And if not, uh. What's the matter? Are you chicken? No way. Okay. You want to start? What's wrong with you starting? Oh, brother. Okay, we'll do it together. Count to three. One, two, two and a half, <laughs> two and three quarters. Three. Oh. <laughs> it was a gross out, wasn't it? Super colossal gross out. <laughs> well, it's getting late. I better go find my folks. They're going to kiss again for sure. Yeah, they liked what they had. They did. And am I right? There was right? a spark there. Oh, gosh, there was. Yeah. And that was a pretty passionate kiss for it kids was. on I know. episode mm-hmm. three. Or for going one, two, three. Wow. We'll be right back with more Love Boat Exposed. Go to loveboatexposed.com to send us a message, leave a voicemail, or learn more about the show and our team. Who knows? You might just be invited to the captain's table. It's a pleasure to welcome you aboard. I'm speaking for my entire crew. <laughs> Where are we going with this whole thing? Um, pregnancy? Teen pregnancy? Pre-teen <laughs> pregnancy, right? That's what you're thinking. Well, Doc can deliver the baby. We've seen him do it once. <laughs> he can't. Well, you know, barely, barely. <laughs> well, a, a clock's right, like a broken clock's right twice a day, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, right. Doc can deliver a baby once, but yes. can you do it again? Okay, because I'm the elder here in our group of three. I think that was like Laura Ingalls from Little House on the Prairie. It looked like Laura was Ingalls. Was that uh, Melissa Gilbert? It looked like Melissa it, Gilbert. It sure did. I was thinking my, uh, that she might have been older at this point. But, and then her sister was in Roseanne. Uh, right. Sarah Gilbert. Yes. Right. They don't look like each other. Well, because Melissa Gilbert is adopted. Really? Yeah. You know a lot about this. Well, I don't. Yeah. She was adopted by the family. Melissa Gilbert's the actual child of the two parents that adopted Melissa. Uh, Okay. Well, that makes some kind of sense. I know. Useless knowledge. No, it's good. I am loaded with it. Yeah. All right. Well, I say no more. Just going to roll. Mom? Mm Mm-hmm? Am I weird looking? No way. And you're a heck of a lot prettier than any pitcher in the majors. (laughs) The scent of her perfume wafted to him. Her diaphanous gown clung to her in the breeze. Clive was overcome by her beauty. He pulled her close and kissed her. And kissed her. And kissed her. Is this preteen? Yeah. It's, uh, y- yeah. <laughs> it's cute, funny, and twisted. How did get she, how did she get access to smut like that? It's kind of disturbing to think about. And I'm a little confused. Maybe I missed a beat, and I frequently will every couple of episodes. So she's a super tomboy. Yes, this is what I was yes. thinking too. And then I was also really happy that her mom was like helping her and promoting that. But it may be like, I mean, hmm. Caleb, I took Cosmo quizzes when I was like 12 years old that I should not have been mm-hmm. taking. So I got a hold of smut too. Right. Well, smut. I guess that was smut, huh? For well, I mean... Written smut. Written smut. There was a big word in there. It was like Diogenes or something like that. I know, that. but she said it perfectly. I don't know what that was. She yeah. probably had to, like, pronounce it, like, or practice it a few <laughs> times. But it's definitely Laura Ingalls. Yeah. I thought- uh, I've got the IMDB, and, uh, yeah, this is uh, Melissa Gilbert. Yes. Right. Okay. Ah, well, that's been settled. 
Yes. We were both right. We were both right. I like when we're yeah. both right. I congrats, congrats, guys. I like when I'm right just in general. You, you get a gold star. Thank you, you, Kayla. Thank you. <laughs> ah, ah, this must be the single lady you've been telling me about. You are kidding. She is a knockout. <laughs> Martha, Joel. Joel, Martha. How do you do it? Two's company, three's a drag. <laughs> Honey, do I have plans for us? A couple of drinks, a uh, stroll around the deck, and then uh, <laughs> we're not kids anymore. Uh, my Gavin or yours? Wait, what? Yeah, no, that's not. So Julie's already uh, pimping her mom out? Yeah, Julie's on like this whole like mind shift fiasco, and she's like, you know what? If my parents are gonna get a divorce, I'm gonna get them hooking up today. And so she's like on this rampage of just like selling her parents off to. Great. Other single man and single woman. What a, she flipped a switch yeah, real quick. What I was just going to say yeah. the same thing. Ye- ye- bipolar. <laughs> well, she only has like <laughs> what? How many people fit on a cruise ship? How many people does she have to choose from? Well, they said like 600 last okay, episode. Okay, well then, oh. there we go. In our world, we're watching really maybe six. Mm-hmm. So she's really having to choose from six. Mm-hmm. Because she's not going to do it with an extra. No, <laughs> not not with a central casting person. <laughs> no. All right, next clip. Honey, you look beautiful. I do. Oh, you sure do. What's that stink? <laughs> I don't know. It's you. What? You happen to be wearing perfume. What do you do? Dump a gallon on yourself? No, I mean <laughs> that's really rude. Uh, why don't you and Rocky go on and play? Oh. Okay. Want to go swimming? Probably stink up the whole pool. I better not. I might get my hair wet. So what? Well, it took a long time to get it this way. Swimming is not going to hurt that hair. No, I mean... Okay. You don't want to swim. You want to go skateboarding? Not in this dress. It's too diaphanous. Well, how about a race? I'll beat you to the bow. Not in these shoes. But that's right. Well, take the dumb shoes off. They go with the dress. They sound like an old married Jewish couple. <laughs> They've literally been together for like 75 years. You know what? This is a throwback to season one, Scott Baio yes. and Christy McNichol. Yes. It's like the kid could be a young Scott Baio in the scene we saw earlier mm-hmm. uh, last year. Yeah. Huh. Like an obnoxious dude and a female who is correct. But this also goes back to like the whole thing when you're growing up as kids and they're like, oh, well, if the guy hits you, he likes you. Like, why are we teaching people that? Right. Like if he makes fun of you, he must like you. If he's like, da, 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 like that's not necessarily true. Yeah. Even if that was the case, he was overkill. He, he was, was like, oh, you're bad. Oh, right, right. oh, your dress, it stinks. Oh, yes. you, you're ugly. Bam, bam, bam. Like, <laughs> bam. He was like, bam, bam, bam. He just destroyed any and everything. And why wasn't she going back to him and being like, well, you have little titties? Like, why wasn't she going back to him and like saying stuff? <laughs> Did he? I mean, he had some man boobs going on. Did he? Yes. Young, young I'm bitch. just saying. Yes. Sick. Yes. I'm, I, if, I, if I had been taught to that way, I would have ripped the dude apart. Yeah, she backed off. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I, think, I think we have to mention um, the boy's mother is... John Travolta's sister. In, In real, real life? life? Ellen Travolta. Yeah. Ellen Travolta, yeah. I didn't even know that. No, I literally <laughs> didn't. I didn't know that he was a nep, a nep, to, was it what they call him? A uh, nepotism? Yes. Nepo baby? Yeah, nepo baby. Ellen Travolta sort of made a name for herself, if I got it right, after he slept his way to the top. Wow. Yeah, she sort of followed along. If I got it right, she played Chachi's, Scott Bayo's mom, in Happy, uh, Happy Days? Days and in Joni Loves Chachi. Wow. Yeah, so again, ABC What World, about in Charles of Charge? That too. Yeah, I've been hearing things about the set of Charles and Charles that aren't real. They're unsavory. I'll leave it at that. Well, I think there's a lot of unsavory things about things that happened in the 80s and early 90s. <laughs> yes. Not with Willie Ames, though. Oh, no. No, I don't know what I'm saying now. It's okay. No, that's all right. You okay? Caleb, producer Caleb? <laughs> you all right? All right, just check. It. Just check he's, it, just, he's just here for the ride. All right. I'm just... <laughs> Just listening. Just fucking. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're children of the 70s and 80s over here. Here we go, folks. Next up. Oh, Rocky. You poor kid. Being a girl is such a pain. Yes, it is. Mm. Norman didn't need to say those things. He just expected his old buddy. Not a glamorous young woman. I'm not glamorous. I look like a freak. Boy, I can't win. 
If I do the things I like to do, everybody yells at me to dress like a girl. And when I dress like a girl, I'm an object of ridicule. Girl, I hear your pain. What a vocabulary, by the way. Producer Caleb, you're so many years beyond when this was filmed. Is it something that could still happen today? What are your thoughts? No, I, that definitely is going to continue to happen today. Yeah, it's like the girl power, like, like, like everything that she said, I've definitely heard in today's medium, some form or another. And it's definitely something that people should be saying, especially in the media, because, yeah, like, she was absolutely right. She's you're all gold up and you're an object or you're a tomboy and you're mm. not what you everyone wants you to be. All right. I'm going to throw something out there. Oh, my gosh. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Get ready. I'm nervous, Caleb. So parents will, unbeknownst to themselves sometimes, will name the child something that will set the child on a certain path. Like, say, uh, co-host Charlotte, you had a daughter. Let's just say this, all right? Okay. Totally fictional here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You named her Lexi. She's going to end up on a pole. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> so you named your daughter Rocky, because that's what they did, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think well, that's they, her nickname. Uh, but they they matter. called her Rosemary, but I think, I, I'm assuming she chose the nickname Rocky, or the Rocky mm. is just her nickname, because mm. she plays baseball, or... Wow. I don't know. Maybe it's a Rocky Calavita reference. Maybe. I'm only saying that because it's my dad's favorite baseball player. Could be, but it's still a dude. It's still a dude, right. 100%. If so. I named my daughter Madison or Savannah, <laughs> we would all have issues. <laughs> We're very proud of you, Rocky, and the things you do so well. But sometimes we just forget to tell you. We think you're beautiful, too. But what you've got, Rocky, the important qualities. She keeps saying the name. what you look like. Rocky. Say so you be yourself. It's not helping. Say what you think. And she punches our daughter. <laughs> Learn to be good at the things you like. Don't ever change, honey. No matter who tries, including your mother and father. I love this mother. Like I said, tear jacking, you know? It's, no, this, this mother is, sad is a fantastic it's, it's mom. Yeah. I was getting caught I up in the acting. I don't agree. Okay, I was getting caught up in the acting. I was thinking Melissa Gilbert was looking for equally great acting from the mom, and the mom seemed to be falling a little bit short. No, well, Melissa Gilbert was a way better actress. Yeah, so I almost saw in Melissa Gilbert's eyes, like, okay, act better. Yeah. But okay, <laughs> uh, I'm seeing things because you guys both saw a great scene that was a tearjerker. Well, I just saw a great mom being a great mom. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Amen. like telling her daughter that like she accepted her no matter what and how proud that they were of her. Like this is unconditional love, which is like the biggest yeah. gift you can give anyone in your life. And like, I don't think there's ever going to be a moment in Rocky's life where she ever feels like she's unloved because her mom has her back. Because moms don't want to lose their daughters. They want to have any connection possible. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's, that's deep. That's very true. Thank you. I've done a lot Thanks, of therapy. Charlotte. Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, producer Caleb, is there more? Is there one more clip? It looks like there might be. There it should. Go. Yeah, it should be. Being single is too much like work. Sure is. Julie's parents dancing now. I thought they broke up. Mm. I've been thinking. Maybe the effort would be better spent on a relationship which has already lasted almost 30 years. That's my roundabout way of saying I love you. Bill, you can say it any way you want. <laughs> God bless that couple. I would also like to say really good casting because Julie kind of looks like both of them. Like she looks like I a also, good mix between both yeah, of them. That's true, that's true. I had that thought too. I was, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah, I had that exact same thought. But yeah, it was Julie went on this rampage of like making, trying to get her parents to hook up with other people. And they were just like, you know what? We just needed some romance. We we still love each other. Right. And then they ended up all happy days. Just takes a Super cruise. Super sweet, heartfelt moment. Absolutely. And oh, happy days. Let's go back to ABC's happy days. We've had <laughs> Scott Bayo and do we have anyone else from happy days? Didn't we have Potsy? Yeah, we did have Potsy. We had Potsy. I don't think we had Ralph Mouth or certainly Henry Winkler is not uh, not showing up lowered yet. himself to do this. Right. But let's go to Three's Company. Right. We've had because, Roper, uh, Mr. and Mrs. And we've had Ritter. Suzanne Summers. And we've had Suzanne Summers. And Jack Tripper. Yeah. We're waiting for Joyce DeWitt, Janet, who hasn't appeared yet. Wonder if that'll happen. I don't know. <sighs> Dreams do come true sometimes. Sometimes, if mm. you pray hard enough. Well, that was a packed episode. A lot it was, happened. It was very great, though. It I was. appreciated that. It was a soap opera in a way, mm -hmm. like a nighttime soap, and it kind of was for this episode. 
Huh. What do you think about this episode, Producer Caleb? Like I said at the start of this episode, there wasn't really many hijinks and shenanigans, but it was more it's more for the heart, more of like right. a emotional episode. Kind of kind of like a I guess a cleanser from that incest thing from last episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We we needed another cleanser, so it was a nice one to have a nice little, a little cry. True. You know, I don't. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't cry. I. No. But it could have happened. Touching it episode happened. From all around. Very touching. Yeah. At yeah. Cer- certain weeks of the month, I would have cried. Okay, I got to ask you this. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Rob, it really just went right over. Rob's head. No, it totally did. Mm, whatever. All right. So, <laughs> what the hell happened with the celibate couple? Yeah, Caleb, what happened? Did they have oh. sex? Yes, they, they broke They did they not. Every rule. It was, well, I just could have slammed the right clip because I just, I didn't want to have okay. like a three minute long did clip Did she take it, off but, the gingham dress? Well, it, it wasn't like shown they had sex, but they like ended up living in the same cabin because they both had female names. Living in, oh. living and, in the same and so they were like, they kept missing each other, but they were like, we want to, we really want to break our, our covenants. We want to break like our traditions, but we can't because you have a roommate in your cabin. So do I, but they didn't realize that they were each other's roommates. And then one morning they woke up and they were both like, what are you doing? Like, we were like, we're getting changed. You're getting naked. This is sinful. And then the, the guy typical was like, Frick being immodest, let's Whoa. just get it on. And then she was like, oh, okay, let's do it. And then they ended up, yeah, just being together. <laughs> okay, let's just do it. It's much easier than leaving the room. Oh, my God, right? Yeah. yeah it yeah. also sounds like producer Caleb said that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, producer Caleb, on that note, what do you say to our audience at a time like this, the end of the show? <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, share with a friend, and we'll see you on the cruise next week. Woohoo! Thanks, everyone. We're sailing away, but we will be back with a new episode of Crime Cruise Love Boat Exposed. Make sure to subscribe. We're on all your favorite podcast platforms and connect with us at loveboatexposed.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure, but I have duties on the bridge. Good evening. Mm-hmm.